caucus meeting, as you can imagine, with a lot of priorities that are in front of us to undertake on behalf of the American people. Uh, we are, of course, committed to getting over the finish line President Biden's Build Back Better agenda, which involves both the bipartisan infrastructure agreement so we can fix our crumbling bridges, roads, tunnels, airports, mass transportation system, and also invest uh, in making sure that every single American has access to high-speed internet, particularly as we've seen during COVID because of the need uh, to be able to work online or be educated online, receive health care online, communicate with your families and loved ones online. We have the bipartisan infrastructure agreement moving on a parallel track with the Build Back Better Act, which we are committed to getting done in the next few weeks. Why? Because President Biden promised that we were not going back to pre-pandemic normal. We were going to build back better because prior to the pandemic, so many everyday Americans were struggling. Half the American people reported that they couldn't afford a sudden unexpected $400 expense. In America, the wealthiest country in the history of the world, so the president laid out a clear agenda related to the jobs plan, the families plan that's coming together in the context of the Build Back Better Act, creating millions of good paying jobs, cutting taxes for working families and middle class families through the child tax credit and making historic investments in home care in health care in child care in elder care, in the caring economy, so we can lower health care costs for everyday Americans, lower child care costs for everyday Americans, and lower the cost of housing for everyday Americans by making historic investments at the federal level in the creation and preservation of affordable housing. We also, of course, will pass the National Defense Authorization Act to make sure that we fully fund the men and women who are serving in our military and can keep America safe in an increasingly dangerous world. Later on this week, we will pass legislation sponsored by Judy Chu, the Women's Health Care Protection Act, to make it clear that women across America should have the freedom to make their own reproductive health care decisions. Shouldn't be determined by a bunch of yahoos in Texas and a negligent Supreme Court. And then finally, uh, we will move forward with legislation being carried by Chairwoman Rosa DeLauro to make sure that we fully fund the government, avoid a reckless shutdown, provide for the health, the safety, and the well-being of the American people by providing for public education and public health and public transportation, public housing, public works projects, all of which are funded by the Congress. In that legislation, we will also uh, address the emergency needs that have resulted from the extreme weather events that we have seen all across the country, most recently as a result of the devastation brought by Hurricane Ida. And we will make sure that the full faith and credit of the United States of America is protected and preserved. The House will not allow the United States government to default on its obligations for the first time in American history. It is our hope that Senate Republicans will also do the right thing and stop playing politics 
around the debt limit. I now yield to our distinguished Vice Chair, Pete Aguilar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And as we talked about in our caucus meeting this last work period, House Democrats were busy spending time at home talking about the importance of the President's Build Back Better agenda. And it's when we have those conversations that we're reminded the importance of the middle tax the middle class tax cut that Democrats passed this year and the positive changes that it made to communities back home. This week, as the, as the chairman mentioned, we're going to be taking up the Women's Health Protection Act so women can have the freedom to access the care that they need. As we've also said, the NDAA um, will take critical steps uh, under Chairman Smith's leadership uh, to reduce domestic extremism, uh, to reduce, uh, to address sexual assault in the military. But those are key priorities of the caucus and key priorities that were discussed within the committee. I'm proud of the way that our colleagues continue to work to craft these bills uh, as we take them to the House floor to, to address the key priorities uh, that we face within the caucus and within the country. These are just some of the things uh, the chairman mentioned a few others. And, and obviously, you're going to ask us about a few, a few more. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it back over to the chairman. All the tough questions will go to Pete Aguilar. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, first row. Um, yeah. uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just with respect to the debt limit, I mean, you said that you hope Senate Republicans do the right thing, but they continue to remain firmly opposed. So what is the plan B? Uh, we're not going to let them off the hook. Right now, the House has a responsibility to act, uh, and we will be doing that in the legislation that Chairwoman DeLauro has put forward. And then it will be the Senate's responsibility to act. I'm confident that Senate Democrats will do the right thing. And it seems that at least a handful of Republicans have begun to publicly indicate that they're prepared to do the right thing as well. Uh, and We'll see what happens over there. We've got to take care of our house first. I will note, well, I don't want to get into that hypothetical because we have to pass our bill to trigger the events thereafter. But I will say, three times during the administration of the former so-called president, three times House Democrats cooperated in raising the debt ceiling. And Kevin McCarthy voted to raise the debt ceiling. We don't expect that he's going to do it this time around because he's just playing politics. And we don't need his support here. Hopefully some House Republicans will do the right thing. But they voted to raise the debt ceiling three times during the previous administration. And now all of a sudden they want to jam up the American people and the American economy and our full faith and credit because they're playing politics. We know House Republicans are going to do it. Hopefully, Senate Republicans will not. Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, you yeah, you. Okay, Mr. Chair. Um, Speaker Pelosi has said that um, whatever passes, that the reconciliation is going to have to match what's going to go through the Senate. That means likely that you all are going to get pared down from three and a half trillion. What? How are House Democrats prioritizing what is going to get? Well, there are ongoing discussions right now, and so I don't want to comment on the different priorities that people may bring to bear because those are discussions. That's okay. It's quite interesting. So, okay, how are you yeah. That's correct. That's not, sounds like it's not. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yield to Pete on this as well, Pete. <laughs> but Pete being on the Appropriations uh, Committee. But everything is important in terms of making the investments that are necessary to lift up everyday Americans who've been struggling. But we do have the constraints of having to make sure that we match up what we do over in the House with what the Senate Democrats are prepared to do. I don't want to get out ahead of those discussions because those conversations are ripe and they are happening right now. 
I will say, and this message was emphasized by both the speaker, the majority leader, and the majority whip, that we expect, as always, to find the highest common denominator amongst our caucus in partnership with the Senate because failure is not an option. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think the speaker emphasized exactly what she put in her dear colleague uh, as well, which is the, the number that we have passed is 3.5. And it is that we neither chamber will go above that number. We hope to get as close to that number as possible. The president campaigned on this agenda. Uh, the president doesn't need to be sold on this agenda. Uh, he believes in it. Um, but we're going to work within the two within the two chambers in order to make sure that we're creating jobs, making the right investments uh, that we need to do uh, to meet this moment, uh, as, the, as the chairman mentioned. And so we're going to continue to do that. That work begins uh, in earnest. Uh, the committee chairs uh, have met. Uh, at some point, the caucus will continue to meet under the chairman's leadership, uh, where members will be heard on their priorities. Members are never shy about sharing their priorities, um, and we expect that to continue, and working within the committees of jurisdiction uh, in order to accomplish the goal, uh, which is to deliver for the American public. That's our focus, that's our mission, that's our plan, and that's what we, we plan to get done. Yeah, well, we're going to come back over there in a minute, but we'll go to the back row. Yeah. Uh, so my question is, uh, do you guys still plan to vote on the infrastructure bill on September 27th? And if not, how long will you at least wait? Well, it's my understanding that uh, Leader Hoyer has indicated uh, that the 27th is the target date that we are working toward. I got to follow up on that. It wasn't just an understanding. I mean, there was a promise that the speaker made to some of your moderates that a vote by the 27th would happen. So. How confident are you that that vote will happen by that date, as it was promised, and will that uh, infrastructure bill pass? Yeah, I said it was my understanding that this. We have a slightly different understanding. That, my understanding that the majority leader had indicated we are moving toward the 27th, and the plan uh, is to hold to that agreement. And I expect uh, that we're going to get done what we need to get done, both to get the bipartisan infrastructure agreement over the finish line as well as the Build Back Better at, hopefully at or very close to uh, the $3.5 trillion that was in the framework agreement. Can, can I follow up a little bit on that? Sure. Are you mostly in a uh, sort of a waiting situation then for the Senate to finish their homework before you guys can move ahead on, on the reconciliation piece? It seems like the House action is kind of stalled at the moment. I wouldn't say the House action is stalled. I think there are active bicameral discussions that are taking place. But you need action from the Senate. We always need action from the Senate. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so, well, two part question. One, would you put this on the floor as Leader Hoyer has indicated, knowing that it would fail? And two, uh, we haven't really heard publicly from President Biden giving the progressives or the moderates any kind of reassurance, one way or the other, that we all need to hold hands and jump off this bridge together. Would that be helpful versus uh, him communicating through Pelosi and caucus, like he said today? Well, the active conversations that are ongoing with the administration tomorrow, uh, we'll be hearing from the administration with respect to uh, the Build Back Better Act at 3 p.m. White House Communications Director is coming to visit us. We'll see who else uh, she brings along. Failure is not an option. The votes will be there for both the bipartisan infrastructure agreement and the Build Back Better Act. Do you think she's going to bring along the president? Is that what you're no, I was not implying that she's going to bring him on. The president has to come via invitation, as I understand the constitutional balance. Uh, one more on, on this, if I may. Is your expectation, given some of what we've heard now from the progressive members of your caucus who aren't going to vote for it without reconciliation, that you're going to need Republican votes to bring you over the finish line on that? I mean, is, is that kind of what you're looking to? Is that the strategy? We can't count on... House Republicans for anything, save for a handful of patriots in other areas like Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger uh, for a whole lot. And we're not proceeding under the expectation that we need Republicans to get President Biden's agenda, which the American people support, over the finish line. You referring to yesterday's meeting? Yes. Yeah, so I wasn't present at yesterday's meeting. It was 
um, as I understand it, an informal discussion with the Vice President on a wide variety of issues, in part just to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the original founding of the Congressional Black Caucus. There were 13 members then, now we're 55, including former alums like former President Barack Obama and current Vice President Kamala Harris. I'm certain uh, that the issue in terms of the Haitian migrant crisis was discussed, but I wasn't present, so I wasn't party to those conversations. Can I go back to the debt ceiling really quickly? We're sort of entering this murky water if the Senate Republicans don't come along and vote for this CR that includes the debt limit and government funding. Um, markets are going to start reacting if, if some people would argue they have already. Are you worried about the, the financial um, implications of not having a clean CR and then thus the debt ceiling? Are you worried about what that does to your Democratic members? Are you going to be to blame for this in the end? Well, again, as a member of the Appropriations Committee, I want to yield to Pete. That's the committee that has put the legislation forward. But I will say we should all be concerned as it relates to making sure we do our jobs in the context of the debt ceiling, which doesn't relate to um, increasing a line of credit so we can do new things. We should all be clear. The debt ceiling is about paying bills that we have already accumulated. And in this particular case, it's COVID related and it's things that Donald Trump himself signed off on as the former president. And so did the Republicans in both the House and the Senate. Now we have to be able to pay our bills. And in order to do that, we have to acquire some additional debt because it was an extraordinary moment a once in a century pandemic. That's why the Republicans are being so irresponsible in suggesting that they may not sign off on a debt ceiling increase or suspension, I think is what is contained uh, in the legislation. Are you worried though about the financial implications of all of this? Well, the, the path that Rosa DeLauro has put forward and the bill that, that we're gonna be voting on is the, is the right path. Um, uh, will it be the ultimate ending point? You know, I don't know. And we're going to have to talk to the other chamber. And it, it's sad to me that, that, you know, Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell get passes on this when they have voted, as the chairman mentioned, on raising the debt limit in prior administrations. And so, you know, the, the Appropriations Committee has, has done our work. We have, we have met, we have moved our bills out of committee. Um, the Senate hasn't done their work. Um, so we're going to have a CR. We're left to the CR until December. Uh, we're attaching the debt limit piece um, to, to keep um, uh, sanity within the markets. Um, and if those folks, you know, have concerns, they should reach out to Senator McConnell um, and ask what full faith and credit of the United States government means. It seems like Senate Republicans need to answer that question more than House Democrats. And on the economy, you know, Senate... Republicans should be hearing from their friends in the big banks, in big business, as to how catastrophic a default on our debt would be for industry, for commerce, for the economy, most importantly, for the American people. Last question? Uh, we'll go to these two final questions, yeah. Yeah, their argument is you guys can do it in reconciliation, you can still do it in reconciliation, and you should do it in reconciliation where you can pass it on your own as you can, you know, control the House, Senate, and President. This is part of their constitutional responsibility to protect the full faith and credit of the United States of America. Did we ever argue that they should just do it in reconciliation when we did it three times because it was the right thing to do? The debt ceiling is not about politics. It's about our responsibility to the American people, to the economy, and to the Constitution. Last question. Well, six days is an eternity in this place. 
and we're going to get this done. We always do. Because at the end of the day, what motivates us, Democrats across the ideological spectrum, uh, is delivering for the people. And this is the president's agenda, Build Back Better. He promised that he would undertake this transformational effort to the American people. And we are going to make sure that that promise is kept. In terms of the discussions that will take place over the next few days, you all know House Democrats are an enthusiastic group. We're not bashful. But we're a coalition, not a cult. And so we embrace the fact that people have different ideas and perspectives. But at the end of the day, we always land at the highest common denominator. And we will do that in this case. And we're going to pass the infrastructure agreement. And we're going to pass the Build Back Better Act.